All right, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting day of mathematics. Warm-up 36 should be coming up on your screen. You will need a calculator, so send a gopher to uh, get you one. One for yourself, one for them. Let's get started, please. Copy and go. So the warm-up reads, sketch a box plot and a bell curve for the following. And it reads, Mr. Q asked seven students how many boxes of chocolate they sold. Answer, one of them said four, one of them one, two, two, another two, one, and the last one, three. So make sure, uh, once again, I need a box plot and a bell curve. You should know what to do with work for that. So I'll give you some time. Hurry up, please. Go. All right, here we go. For the sake of time, let's get uh, this show on the road. I need uh, Q1, Q2, Q3 for my box plot. All right. Query, what you get for Q1? 1. Q2, 2, and Q3, 3. So there's my box. Yeah, I need to do uh, convey how to find the cues. Here it goes. So arrange in ascending order, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. From there, you go to the median. That means the middle. So what's the middle? So let's see. There's seven data. So I go three and three. So right in the middle is two. So that is our Q2. Amelia, once you get Q2, which is this one, you split the data into two sections. The lower part, which is this one and the upper part, which is this one. So from the lower part, you need to go to the middle again, and that's going to be our Q1. From the upper part, you go to the middle again, and that's going to be our Q3. And to finish our box, we need a maximum. What is our maximum? Our maximum is 4, which is over here, and that's going to be our Whisker, if you want to call it. And our minimum is what? 1, which is already in Q1, so I just accentuate it there so that we can indicate that it's part of that box. And have you got that? All right. Bell curve. We need a mean. What did you get for your mean? Viani. 7. Hands, have you got seven? Double check. Four plus one plus two plus two plus one plus one plus three. That is 14 divided by seven. That is two. Yeah, so it was close, seven to two, close. They looked almost the same. Two. <laughs> So we need a standard deviation up, standard deviation down, and that's going to be our norm. So what you get for your standard deviation, uh, Austin S, 1.07. And have you got 1.07? Yep. So that means we are uh, one standard deviation up is 3.07. One standard deviation down, we are at 0.93. So our norm is from 0.93 to 3.07. So now look at the context of this one, guys. I asked seven students how many boxes of chocolate. This is what they told me. Now according to these and according to the norm, tell your neighbor what is your conclusion. What is your conclusion? Conclusion. All right. Conclusion. Brandon Darty. Six 
students are in the norm. So most of the students uh, sold anywhere from 0.93 to 3.07. So what does that tell you of that one student, guys? He's outside the norm, so he's way over here somewhere. So whoop, that, that person is fussily. No names pointed out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let me send you the blank screen again so you can send me your notes. Hold on. And here's the agenda for you guys to copy. Do that, please. Warm-up number 36, frequency tables and graphs. Your home plea for tonight, only one problem. Only. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Austin T is all like, Mr. Q, just give us a pop parte already. Let's go. We got this on max. All right. All right. So once again, warm-up 36 done. We're wrapping up frequency tables and graphs. And hopefully for tonight, one problem. So last night, we had three problems. But before you uh, go there, here's a code for your access to the home play. P79JY. 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 All right. All right, so last night, hopefully were these three problems. So go ahead and go to Canvas, turn that in, please. One back-to-back -back stem and leaves. The other ones were regular stem and leaves. Throw, uh, turn that in, please. Tonight's home play look up. Yeah, same ones. So you're going to pick one of those to do everything we do today which is everything from last week and this week together in one. Yanni, let's go. All right, so turn in your home play on Canvas and get a Cornell note so we can get this show on the road. And just FYI, this is being recorded. It should be up to, uh, uploaded after lunch. So here we go. I can represent raw data to frequency tables and graphs. So let's see where we've been, guys. We already know the two types of data, yes? Yes, Mr. Q. All right, type that in on your screen. The two types of data and what each one represents. Do that really quick. Two types of data. All right, so correct answer is categorical and quantitative. Categorical, you cannot express with numbers. Quantitative, you can. Here goes a bonus question. Look up to the screen. I remember that after we did this, I said another word for categorical, or another name for it, is what? And it starts with the letter Q. Think about it. Tell your neighbor what is another name for categorical that starts with the letter Q. All right. Looks like Max has got it. Very good, Max. See you. Let's go with Mario. That is correct. Qualitative. That is correct. Damn. All right. Move on. We know what uh, the definition is. However, let's go to the graphs. Type in on your screen the three graphs that we started with. Type them in there. What three graphs did we start with? So that's going to be part of your home plate tonight. By now, you should know these by heart. Huh, oh, Aaron. Let's go. Five, three, one Mississippi. Bam. Pictogram, frequency polygon, and ogive. Yes? All right. And from there, we moved on to the next four. So, type them in there. Next four. What are the next four? Ten, nine, five, three, one. 
Bam. Bar graphs, time series, pie graph, and Pareto. And once again, reminder on Pareto is from greatest to least of the data. All right. From there, we move on to the last two. Last two, type them in there. Last two were dot plot and stem and lead. We got those, yes? All right, so really quick. We covered this one. We went to that one. From there, we went to, oh, uh, did the stem and leaf. There it is. From there, we went to this one, showed you how to create a stem and leaf using classes, yes? From there, we went to this one, back-to-back -back stem and leaf, and you did one by yourself. From there, we revisited misleading graphs, yes? Which brings us to today, bam, copy this one, example 7Q. Copy all the... the the instructions, including the problem, don't copy the data. I'm going to send that to your screen. So here it goes. It reads, an insurance company researcher conducted a survey on the number of car thefts in a large city for the period of 30 days. Construct a group frequency distribution, an ogive, a histogram, a frequency polygon, and a stem and leaf. So, you're going to write conclusions at the end. So, to get us started, here's the raw data. Let me send it to your screen. For this one, I suggest you work, if you need to, with a partner. Don't look at your notes. Try and get everything out of your noodle. Try to do everything from your noodle. There's the raw data on your screen. I'll wait for you to copy that problem really quick. All right, everybody copy that problem? Yes? All right, so let me go and get this screen in front of me. Let me make some space with me, uh, my handy dandy tool here. All right, so to get started, let me pause the music. To get started with a grouped distribution. So you know what that, that means. What does that mean? Group distribution. All right. Let's go with Mario. Pass someone. Max, what does group distribution mean? Or let me, re, let me rephrase. What does the word distribution ring a bell? Separate, okay. Close, very close. Help them out, uh, Austin T. Distribution, what does that mean? Aaron. <clears throat> A table. Right? Remember that we said, instead of saying frequency table, what we're going to say? Distribution. So remind your neighbor, how many columns are you going to start your table with? Show me with fingers, everyone. How many columns? That is correct. Four. Bah. Here's one, two, three, and four. All right. So, to get us started, we need the first two steps. Step number one and step number two. Tell you never what are the first two steps. And Colleen's going to enlighten us. First two steps in getting started with our distribution. First two steps. All right, Z. 
Step one. The range, that is correct. So find me that range, please. I'll give you some time. Go. All right, Colleen, pass someone. Aaron. <laughs> what is the range? 29. Hands have you got 29? That is correct. So you should have gotten 79 minus 50. There it is. Okay. Step two. Tell you never what step two is, and then Aaron's going to pass someone. Step two. Aaron, pass someone. Me, and I pass it to Aaron. Let's go. What is step two, Aaron? One word, one letter. Which is what letter? Which is what letter? W for width. That is correct. We need to find the width. How do we find the width? Aaron says the range divided by the number of classes. All right, so we got the range, which is 29. However, read the problem. Does it say the number of classes? No, this, in this case, you need to make a decision. So you need to think it through. Look up. How many days are they uh, talking about? 30. So you need to think of the, in this terms. What factors do, uh, can I get from 30? 5 and 6. So you need to make the decision. You want either 6 classes or 5 classes. You make the decision. So divide by that number. Go. <coughs> All right, Austin T, what did you divide by? By 5, okay. So 29 divided by 5 gave you what? 4.8, which gives us a width of? What? 5.8 instead of 4.8. Okay. 5.8, and that gives us what? 6. That is correct. All right. Did anybody go with 6 classes? Oh, okay. Everybody went with 5 classes. Okay. So with that said, tell your neighbor the, the titles of each of these columns, please. Titles for those columns. All right. Austin T, go. I know. We're starting together. Help them out, Cole. What is the first one? No, no, no. The title. Class limits. That is correct. Come on, people. Stay focused. Bye. Once again, reminder with those cell phones. Next column. Um, Santi. Class boundaries. Next one, Logan. Tallies. And of course, the last one is our frequency. Okay. So, tell your neighbor where to, where to start with here.
Logan passed someone? 50. All right. And if our width is 6, what do we start the second class with? You better get there. Hear me. What would be our next number? Pass someone, Samuel. Max. Fifty six. That is correct because our width is what? Six. Therefore, give us the next one, Max. The next class. Sixty two. And the next one? Sixty eight. Okay. And the last one? 74. All right. We need upper limits for each of those classes. All right. Tell me what you write for these. Pass them on, Max. Mario, go. Yes. 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 Yes, let's go. All right, so far so good. Write your boundaries. And while you're writing your boundaries, I'm going to get you started with the, with the tallies first and then my frequency. I'm going to start with red for the first class from 50 to 55. Let's see. 50 to 55, we got one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's my first class. Second class. 56 to 61, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is that it? Did I miss anything there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. Let's go to the next one. 62 to 67. We got, let's see, 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, seven. So far, so good, yeah? All right. I'll let you finish the, the last two. All right, check with the neighbors, see what they got for the next class and their tallies and their uh, frequency. All right, let's see, Alexa, what'd you get? Tallies and frequency. Six, hands, have you got six? Looks about right, let's double check. From 68 to 73. 68 to 73, we got um, one, two, three, four, Five. Did I miss one? Oh yeah. Uh, did I miss one? 
No? So it's five? All right. One, two, three, four, five. Let's change that to five. There it is. And the last one, we change to uh, red again. 74 to 79. 74 to 79, we got one, two, three, four, five. Did I miss any? We good? That is five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So now, I want you to follow along with me. Let's do a stem and lead to get started. You guys already know how to do the uh, histogram, frequency, polygon, and the OJI. So let's do a stem and lead. So draw your stem. And right now I'm starting with the first class. Look up. I'm starting with this one. With this one. So I'm going to start with 5. Right? Because it starts with 5, yeah? So I'm looking for numbers from 50 to 55. How many numbers do I need to find? Eight of them. Yes? All right. So, here we go. So I'm going to use the red just to follow my backtrack, all the red ones that I did. So I'm going to start with red. So I got 52, this one. I got 53, 51. I got 51, 55, 50, 53, and 55. So therefore, those, I'm going to cross them out, but I'm going to start with the smallest one. What is my smallest one? 50. So I put 0. I go to 51 twice. 1, 2. From there, I go to 52. 53, I got one, two of them. Then I got uh, 55 twice, five and five. Here and here. Did I get all of them that I had a check mark on? Yes. All right. Let's go to the next class. The next class, I'm going to start with, uh, again, five. I'm going to put five. So I'm going to look all the ones in green, in green. So here's 5, 7, oh, 5, 7, 5, 6, 5, 9, 5, 7, and is that it? Where at, Adam? Where? First column? Right here. All right. So, smallest one is 56. Then I go to 57 twice. One, two. Then I got 58. Then I got 59. Are we doing good? All right, let's go to the next class. I, I don't have any more ink, I know. But go to the front office if you need some. Yeah. Uh, let's go to 62 to 67. So in blue, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so I start with 62, 63. Sixty-five, sixty-six, huh? Yeah. Uh, what else? Sixty-seven. Oh, sixty-six twice. My bad. And sixty. Oh, I forgot one five as well. Ah. Five, six, six, and 
seven. Good? All right. So that should be seven of them. Three, six, seven. Yes. Go to the next one. Starting from 68 to 73, 68. Now check this out. Notice this one. This is where I wanted to get to. From 68 to 73. 68, we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Smallest one is 68. Then we got 69 twice. However, can we write 73 and 72 here? Tell your neighbor why not. Because it starts with what? So that means we would go 7 and then we do what? 72 and 73. And then continue your last one there as well. All right? Stem and leaf. Let me send you a blank screen so you can send me your notes. What am I talking about? Oh, it's, you already have it in front of you. Send me your uh, notes really quick. All right. So it looks like we, we got the, uh, the whole process of getting our class limits, class boundaries, you fill that in, tallies, frequency, and then getting our stem and leaf, and you know how to do the histogram, uh, frequency polygon, and the uh, ogive. So for tonight, once again, look up, here's the home plate, pick one of them and represent that using your distribution and the four graphs. All right, we'll stop right there and go ahead and log out. Really quick, from one to five, how comfortable are you with everything so far that we've seen? Yeah, five fours, five fours, awesome T. Let's go, he said a 10. All right, and for those of you that are following on YouTube, make sure you put in your practice, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.